Stop the hassle. Get your business insurance online in minutes with BizCover. With BizCover, get multiple quotes from some of Australia's leading insurers and buy in just a few clicks with no paperwork. BizCover, that's business insurance made easy. BizCover.com.au Welcome back to the program. Been great to have so many of your calls and your texts so far today. Love talking to Campbell Brown every Friday from AFL Nation and SEN Track. You can catch the winners with Miles Fistner tomorrow from 9am on SEN Track and catch Brownie on Trackside right across the week on SEN Track. Hawthorne Premiership star Campbell Brown to talk some footy and some racing. Got a little bit of a breaking story when it comes to racing and Brownie's connection with the superstar Jamie Carr. We'll get to that shortly. Uh, welcome to you, firstly, Brownie. Great to have you on. Yeah, thanks, Dwayne. It's been a pretty big week in football, hasn't it? Been a massive week. Uh, well, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with your old friend? I know we spoke earlier this week about Alistair Clarkson and the decision by the Hawthorne Football Club. You've had a few days now since we spoke on air with the dust settling. What do you make of it now? Yeah, look, I think that uh, the club's handled it very professionally, like they always do. Um, and um, Clarko's manager's come out since and, and basically said that he won't be going anywhere. He's going to honour his contract like he said he would. And um, that should put to bed that story of him going anywhere else. I, I, he's a man of his word and I expect him to, to coach 22. So, um, yeah, let's hope it's a, an amicable handover and, uh, and they can work really well together, which, I, look, I think they will. Um, who, uh, who sort of is pulling the strings next year? Um, is yet to be seen, but I think that um, you know they've they've obviously both got the best interests of the Hawthorne Footy Club um, at hand. Yeah, which is something that we should default to. I mean, Clarko has for it throughout his entire career as Hawthorne coach been such a a strong it's us kind of guy, and that's been the thing that I suppose has been able to get the best out of his players as well. You're playing for us; it's our group; it's this club; it's it's the unity of it. And uh, he, 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 you doubt he'd stray from that now with another year and a half to go on his contract. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's one of his, his great strengths, the, the way he's able to motivate the group and, and get the absolute best out of them, um, not just with, with game plan uh, and structure, but just knowing how to tap into a player's psyche, know how they tick to, to make sure that they're performing it at the best level. And you know, a lot of players have left Hawthorne and, and never gone on to play as good a football. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, Sam Mitchell's, um, they've got a lot of similar traits, Clucko and, and Sam. and the, the main one is probably that they're both unbelievably driven to, to be the best, you know, coach they can be and, and ultimately as successful for the club as they can be. So, yeah, it's interesting. I, I always thought that Sam would, um, would coach Hawthorne. Uh, I've been a, a bit of a, I think I've said to you before, I'm not a big fan of former greats of clubs going back and, and coaching their club um, straight away, and I've, I've listed you know Michael Voss and James Hurd and Nathan Buckley as examples. But um, you know, there's, there's no reason why um, you know Sam can't make it work. What did you make of last night? Looks like uh, Melbourne are making it work at the moment. Oh yeah, are they what? They were sensational. I thought Port Adelaide would win at home, um, and Melbourne right from the opening bounce just uh, just had a, a steely resolve uh, about them, um, which we probably didn't didn't see for the four quarters last week uh, when they end up getting beaten by GWS but they were fantastic and every time they they got challenged by Port who got it back to as close as sort of seven points there in the the third quarter Melbourne immediately answered and um, won the clearance got it down to Tom McDonald who kicked the goal and and they were just far too good so um, I know that Ben Brown didn't get a lot of the footy but I think they desperately need that second tall up there for structure and if, if he can sort of embrace that role that's not necessarily going to be a goal-kicking role, but bring the ball to ground, crash the patch, create a contest and, and let little Cozzy Pickett and Spargo and, and Bailey Fritch and some of those guys go to work, then, um, you know, it's, it's going to be really important for them. So I wouldn't even be judging Ben Brown on, on how many goals he kicks between now and the end of the year. I'd just be, be sort of looking at his contest. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. In fact, they ticked so many boxes last night, Melbourne. It's uh, it's hard to even see where, um, you know, they had a flaw last night. Uh, Port Adelaide's the one with the flaws, though. Brownie, are, are they a contender still? They're going to make the finals, but are they actually able to win it? Uh, well, they'll need to improve significantly. Uh, I still think there's too big a um, emphasis on Charlie Dixon, who was 
you know, he competed well, but he was pretty well soundly beaten by Steve May last night uh, around the contest. And, um, you know, you, you're leaving a lot of responsibility up to, um, you know, some really young players. Uh, George Yardis was, was terrific, but he's only in his second year of football. He's 19 years of age. You can't expect him to, to probably do more than what he did last night, you know, kick a couple of goals and, and do some nice things. Connor Rosie's a star, but again, he's, he's quite young, uh, Marshall. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, the defence is good. Their, their midfield sound, but um, their forward line has, has always been a little bit of a concern if Charlie Dixon doesn't fire and um, they they just they beat up on sides that they should beat, um, you know, in the, in the bottom 10 and, uh, and they really struggle to beat sides in the, in the top eight. Yeah, it's, uh, so you think they still can actually, if they get it cranking, if they can get consistency, um, go all the way, or are you putting them in the I doubt it basket? Well, they, they, to me, they're still a similar side to what they were last year, and they were only a kick away from making mm. a grand final. So there's still enough time in the season, um, and I still think they're a good enough list to, to make some changes and tweaks that they might need to make. And Ken Hinckley will be well aware of that because they've come up short so many times against good sides. And they've been terrific uh, on so many times against the average side. So I don't think that the margin for error is massive, but last night should be a pretty big wake-up call to that group that hey, they've still got a fair bit of work to do. So there's a few teams just outside the eight that have got big games coming up this weekend. Uh, tonight, Essendon and Adelaide. How do you see this one unfolding at Marvel? Yeah, I think Essendon should be winning this. I mean, Tex Walker being out's a, a massive loss for them. Um, and, I, I mean, if you go back and, and look at, what they did well last week. Their first quarter was outstanding. After that, they fell away dramatically, and that was probably a combination of, of Geelong sort of lifting their intensity and, and, and making some changes in-game, uh, which a really experienced group can do. Um, but I would have, if I was Ben Rutten this week, I would have just been focusing in on the first quarter and how well they played and said, boys, you know, we just, we just need to bring this for the whole game. Um, and they, they might be able to do that against... And Adelaide side, which, you know, the ball should be pretty free-flowing. I expect it to be a high-scoring game, and that should suit Essendon. Hawthorne, your old team, or one of your old teams against Fremantle. Fremantle under some pressure to produce the kind of performance that can get them back inside the eight. They've got a team below them on the ladder. It is at the University of Tasmania Stadium in Launceston, which is a hard place to beat Hawthorne. How do you th- think this one will unfold? Uh, yeah, we both thought the Freo would win last week against Carlton, um, yep. so I thought they were a bit disappointing, and, and the Hawks were really, really disappointing. Um, you know, up until three quarter time, they uh, they were appalling on um, Saturday night. Maybe just the whole build up to Shawnee's four hundredth and and everything that came with it just um, you know sapped a bit of their their energy because um, they've played with a lot of spark um, over the last couple of weeks and we just couldn't find it on Saturday night. So. Um, yeah, look, I'm expecting them to bounce back. Like you mentioned, um, they're a much better side down in Tasmania. And uh, and I think that um, after last week's disappointing performance, there'll be a few players put on notice and uh, and they should respond. Carlton, Geelong, any chance that the, the Blues can keep this run going? No, I don't think so. Um, I just think that if, if Geelong rock up and, and play remotely close to their best, they should be um, putting the Blues away pretty comfortably. And some other big games coming up this round. Uh, for the Saints, their chances are still alive, but they do have to get the job done on the Gold Coast Metricon Stadium against the Lions to keep stamping at the heels of the teams above them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they're, they're sitting in uh, an 11th spot on 28 points, and, uh, and Richmond and Free are in that mix. So um, they'll be well aware that uh, you know there's a potential for them to, to sneak into the eight if a few things go their way. And um, Look, I, I don't think they'll, they can win, but... Um, like I said, you know, they, they're a bit of an enigma. Their, their best has been terrific this year and, and their worst has been appalling. So um, if they can produce some of the, the form they've found over the last couple of weeks, um, they, they certainly will be competitive. But you just have to stop that, uh, that forward line of, of the Brisbane Lions that uh, have so many avenues to go. Mars Stadium, Ballarat, maybe about nine degrees for the Giants and Suns. <laughs> I never thought we'd see the Giants and the Suns playing in Ballarat. <laughs> Brian, that's for sure, and will be freezing if this week's anything to go by. Um, yeah, look, both were, were really good last week, weren't they? Um, you know, I thought some people were saying that's one of the Suns' best best victories in, in the club's history, and it'd be hard to, to argue with uh, what they produced on the Thursday night. So, 
Um, hopefully they're competitive, but um, but the Giants are you know a real threat if they get their game going. Bulldogs and Sydney, great game, Marvel Stadium Sunday afternoon. Yeah, this should be a cracker, and it's look, it'll be good to see um, Jamara make his his debut. He's I know his form um, at the VFL level probably he hasn't been knocking the door down, but um, he gets his opportunity, and, and some of these really good young players play better at the highest level. You know, it's, it's pretty hard to, if you're a forward and you're a skinny kid like him, um, to be dominating at VFL level. So hopefully with the ball delivery um, at AFL level and b- bigger rivals and things like that, he might get a chance to impress some. Um, so yeah, doggies, doggies going beautifully. And, and I mean, Sydney were, were irresistible last week. I don't know if it was how bad West Coast were or just how good the, the Swans were, but geez, they were impressive. Do you think the Swans can genuinely win the flag if, and it's still a big if, if they don't get another home game this home and away season, they might not get a chance to get another home game with crowds for at least a month? Yeah, that'll hurt them, won't it? Um, look, it'd be a massive shock to me. I've, I mean, they're a really good side and they've proven proven to be hard to beat all year, but I have them um, you know, below the Western Bulldogs and, and Brisbane, Geelong and Melbourne. Um, so I think they'd need to produce their absolute best. You know, they could certainly um, win a final um, and, and cause a little bit of carnage, but uh, I'd be very surprised if they could win it with that young group. Uh, Richmond, Collingwood. Richmond a chance to, well, bite back, I suppose. And Haas needs a yeah, win I, as Collingwood coach. Yeah, he does. He, he certainly does. And, um, you know, Richmond have, have shown over the last three or four years that they, they respond pretty well. Um, I know last week was a bit of an aberration. You know, um, Jim basically said it's the biggest game of their season and they, they came out and, and lost to the Sun. So um, you'd think that that would just double down their their enthusiasm and, and, and vigour for the contest, knowing full well that, um, you know, they, there is a final spot up for grabs and it's a pretty proud group. And, and just listening and, and looking at Jack Rewalt's body language during the week when he was on AFL 360, you know, he, he still feels like, uh, this group can uh, can do some good things. So the belief is, is certainly there, as it should be. But um, these are the games that you've just got to be winning. And we expect the West Coast Eagles at home on Monday night to get the job done against North? Yeah, we do. Um, and they probably need to look internally at, uh, at some of their performances as well. Uh, I thought around the contest they were pretty good last week um, and match Sydney, but it was just on the outside. They just got absolutely blown away on uncontested possessions. And, and that's that's work rate, Dwayne. You know, like that's just not wanting to roll the sleeves up and, and, and push and work, um, chase and, and do all those sorts of things. So that's where they were exposed. And um, Adam Simpson's probably got a few headaches because their list, I really rate their list. I think it's a fantastic list. You know, in all facets, their, their back line's strong, their mids, you know, they've got a lot of A graders and, and obviously we know a lot about their forwards. Um, so how they can dish up a performance like they did last week is, is just mind-boggling. So... Yeah, no doubt plenty of questions will be asked and, and some of the leaders will be, um, will be driving some of those conversations, but they should bounce back. Jamie Carr, 100 winners for the season and uh, you've got a little bit of a link there. Uh, yeah, well, we thought she would get it on Wednesday and she had um, eight terrific rides and um, didn't quite get a, a winner, which basically leaves, um, leaves the ball in her court for Saturday and um, if she can get through the first race without winning... Um, then she rides for Tony and Calvin McAvoy, a horse called Deep Speed, in race number two, which should be able to just jump, go to the lead, dictate the pace, give a little kick on the turn and, and be too good for them. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, me and my old man um, and family are, have got 10% of Deep Speed, so there's the little link and Jamie Carr's riding. And so if, uh, if that is her history-breaking 100th Metropolitan win, it'll be, uh, be nice to be a part of that sort of history. So will you be there? Will you be there in the mounting yard and uh, ready for the big cuddle after she weighs in? <laughs> I reckon she'd be trying to avoid me like the plague. But uh, <laughs> no, I won't be. Uh, I won't be there on Saturday. I'll just be. Um, I'll be watching from from home. So um, I'm quite confident that we'll win, but um, not going to be making it into Caulfield. All right, deep speed. Uh, we'll put that in the book, Jamie. It is a phenomenal performance, isn't it? I mean, we'll be talking more. Well. Hopefully we wouldn't be talking more about it if it was Damien Oliver. But we, we, we've seen over the course of time there are some jockeys that uh, get a lot of publicity. I'm not sure Jamie Carr's getting as much as she deserves. Yeah, she's a, a superstar and, um, 
and deserves all you know all the credit that is coming her way and and the fact that you know racing's been around forever um no no jockey has has had a hundred wins in um the racing season at metropolitan level male or female um i think brett preble got stuck on 99 and a half he had a um a dead heat so he didn't bring up the big ton and um she's still got plenty of time to get there so she will it's just a matter of of which horse and which day but um yeah, pretty phenomenal performance. I mean, it's, it's breaking, it's breaking down. You know, all sorts of of records, uh, including the the gender one that uh, we just see so often now that the best jockeys and, and the most wins on particular days are are from females. And um, you know, you have a look at the apprentices coming through the ranks. Uh, they're outnumbering the boys now. It's just great to see. Yeah, it is fantastic to see. Uh, a couple of winners for the weekend, if you can, for us, Brownie. We all need one. Yeah, we certainly do. So, um, Corpner race one, I'd be very surprised if the favourite to Patio gets beaten. It's a really, really uh, nice filly. And um, it won on debut in Geelong uh, to come to town. And um, I think Godolphin had two runners in this race. And, uh, and James Cummings has scratched the other one, which gives you a pretty good indication that they don't think it'll be able to beat the Patio. So, that's in race one, number two. And, of course, I'll be tipping... Mine in race number two. That's race two, number four, deep speed. So hopefully those two lob early and we've got a bit of house money to play with. Great to have you, Brownie. Thanks for sticking around. I really appreciate it. And a good punting on the weekend. Thanks, Dwayne. Cheers, mate. Have a good weekend. The one and only Campbell Brown previewing of the weekend, having a look at last night. And great to have him every Friday on Dwayne's World. That's it for me. If you're heading to Marvel Stadium, by the way, or the MCG this weekend. A reminder that you can now listen to the SEN Stadium call. You can download the SEN app, listen live, play-by-play, no delay at the MCG and Marvel Stadium. So try the SEN Stadium app when you can. Thanks to everyone that sent through a text this week and called this week. I love Midday Matters. I'm back for Midday Matters on Monday. So looking forward to your company on Monday after a big weekend of footy and sport in general. So much to watch, including England v Italy, which will be 5 o'clock Monday morning our time, that Euro final. So that should be a ripper. Ash Barty, so much to talk about next Monday. So join me for Midday Matters next Monday. But stick around. Bob and Andy, and with Bob in the prison bar, Port Adelaide jumper as well, they're joining you next.